Zones and areas within the Pokemon video games are oftentimes pretty evident of a part of the video games. There's generally a limit to how many of these we can get to explore, and that is something that the Pokemon anime doesn't have to hold itself to. See, in the anime there are loads of secret zones and areas and places that are exclusive to the anime that you will never probably see in the video games, because otherwise the video games will probably be insanely massive and take a very long time to create. So today I want to explore some of these anime exclusive secret zones and areas of Pokemon. Let's get started. First up has got to be the Dark City. This is a city located between the Safari Zone and Cinnabar Island in the Kanto region. Basically, the whole story behind the city is that it's a city which is broken and destroyed due to there being two gyms in the city that are fighting for who will become the definitive one gym of the city itself causing there to be massive clashes between the two gyms, the Yas Gym and the Kaz Gym, ran respectively by Yas and Kaz. During the anime, we get to see them fighting each other with several like times with their Pokemon, like for example, Electabuzz and Scyther, but towards the end, we find out that an agent that works for the Pokemon Inspection Agency basically was there undercover, and he had found out and basically seen what they've been doing and determined that both of the two gyms were not worthy of being called an official gym of this city, causing both gyms to stop fighting and working together to fix Dark City and hopefully in the future, together run a singular gym there. Next is the awesomely named Metallica Island, which is exclusive to the Kanto region in the anime. It is found between Cinnabar Island and the Seafoam Islands, and it serves as a home to the Battle Palace, one of the facilities that you can find also within the Hoenn Battle Frontier. And this is an island that hosts Spencer, the Palace Guardian, who is also one of the Frontier Brains and the master of the Battle Palace. You see him rolling with some pretty awesome Pokemon like a bunch of Beedrill, a Venusaur, Chansey, Shiftry, and Claydol. And this location in itself, Metallica Island, is kind of interesting because in the anime, basically, it's literally an island. Whereas if you look at like Emerald and stuff like that with the battle facility aspect of it, it's slightly different. It's sort of connected to everything else. It isn't separate off to like a totally different place and all that. It's very close by, literally attached to the same place. So, yeah, though a pretty cool place. Then we have Pokemopolis, which is probably one of the coolest Pokemon anime exclusive places ever. So Pokemopolis was basically an ancient civilization and an ancient place which is located in close proximity to Pallet Town, actually, and it showed up during the ancient puzzle of Pokemopolis episode of the anime. This place got accidentally discovered by Ash and friends, but the credit for discovering it was stolen by an archaeologist named Eve. Either way, the ruins here contain some artifacts, and it turns out that these were actually ancient Pokeballs, and inside of them were some interesting things. Within the Unearthly Urn, this one contains the Giant Alakazam. Then you also have the Dark Device containing the Giant Gengar, which is really interesting. There's also another thing though, there is the Paintbrush containing the Giant Jigglypuff in the shape of a Doktaku Bell. And there were a few other, you know, actual artifacts, like for example, there was a Psyduck Dog figure and just some other things but generally speaking the most cool aspect of this has to be these giant you know Alakazam and Gengar that go all out fighting each other but there's also a stone tablet found near the entrance to Pokemopolis which has an ancient scripture on it which when deciphered says beware the two great powers of destruction the shadow of the dark device will grapple with the prisoner of the unearthly urn. The sacred city will be no more as day is swallowed up by night. Darker still for you when they return to lay waste to the world. But no human knows the secret to soothe the powers and guide them back to the shadow world. So yeah, it's a pretty crazy place, if I may say so myself. But I'm a big fan of it, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm a big fan of the idea of the Pokemopolis, and I really wish they do something like this in the Pokemon games, especially now that, you know, we've got gigant gig you know, Gigantamaxing, Dynamaxing, all that actually exists. Like, we have gigantic Pokemon now. So it'd be really awesome if they were to introduce something like this. I genuinely would actually love that. I think it'd be so freaking cool, because it's actually the perfect time to introduce that in the games. Just like this crazy, hidden, ancient city with a bunch of, you know, crazy 
crazy Pokemon there and just giant Pokemon you can find, you know, that are permanently Dynamaxed. I don't know, it would be really cool. But yeah, let's go to the next. The Summit Ruins from the Sinnoh region. These ruins are located near the Pokemon Summer Academy, which is basically in itself close to Mount Coronet. Now, due to some construction work going wrong, a accident reveals a secret cave entrance within the ruins, which is then believed to be the entrance to the Ghost World, which in itself is actually a really interesting place in the Pokemon universe. And it is basically present in both the Pokemon video games somewhat and very much in the anime. It is basically a plane of existence within the anime world of Pokemon that is the home to the world of spirits as well as ghosts, which also reside here, as ghosts are basically lost spirits of those long past. So it serves essentially as the home for ghost type Pokemon as well as ghosts of people as well. Now, due to the spiritual energy, this place emits basically electrical and radio waves. So yeah, it's kind of spooky. But within the summit ruins, this is actually somewhat true. This place does exist and a gate emerges and from within this gate or portal, whatever you want to call it, an actual ghost girl emerges that tries to lure humans into the ghost world. Now, luckily, she was stopped by a Dusknoir, and eventually the ghost world, like, portal gets patched up and nobody's sucked in further through it. Now, since we were talking about, like, massive Pokemon and, like, Dynamaxing and all that, I wanted to add another last one in here because I think it's worth bringing up, and that's Bill's Lighthouse. Now, you guys may remember this because Bill's Lighthouse is an anime-exclusive location from specifically one of the earliest parts of Pokemon. Like, this is some of the most early stuff. Now, it does have an actually really cool thing about it, which is the giant Pokemon, like, seemingly the giant Dragonite that you can see in the distance whenever you approach this place. Now, now, what's the whole deal with this area in general? Well, Ash and friends come to this place, and before we actually get to the lighthouse itself, Ash actually catches himself a Krabby in just, you know, a normal Pokeball. But then they head over to the actual, you know, lighthouse and some strange things go on there. Since Bill isn't present, he gets told later on by them that they saw this gigantic Pokemon essentially, and we do see some, you know, shenanigans happen with Team Rocket and all that, but I think this place is really interesting because it shows you that Bill's basically got, like, a straight up, like, lighthouse of his own, and who knows what else, because within the video games, he doesn't really have, you know, a lighthouse, more or less he just has his own home, right? Which is just about it. But the fact that he has a lighthouse and that this thing of all things, like, a straight up gigantic Dragonite, which, by the way, within the Pokemon anime now, Ash has a Dragonite, and the current generation features Dynamax Pokemon. So, I don't know, I feel like it's a really cool coincidence. So I just wanted to include this exclusive location, because I think it'd be really cool if they ever added in the future an event where you go to a, like a lighthouse, and then once you approach it, out of nowhere, a giant shadowy Pokemon, you know, gigantic, just appears from the water and then disappears. I don't know, it'd be really cool, I would really appreciate that. And that is it for today's video, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, then drop a like down below. Thank you so much for watching, and my name has been Ruffle Rallet. I will see you all in the next one. Also, make sure to check out my previous videos. There will be some links in the description down below and on the end screen. And yeah, that's about it. Have a great day, and bye-bye, ladies and gentlemen.